What's up guys, it's Wakey as usual, coming to you from the buoy dungeon. No, I'm not here to check your prostate, I'm here to show you a little bit about the secret life of a buoy. Starting a new uh, segment here, kind of a behind the scenes on lobster fishing, all the bullshit work that we do to all the hours of labor that we don't get paid anything to do, it's just part of the job. Buoys is one of them. Everybody hates doing it, painting buoys. Every single person in the whole ocean has a different buoy color. Well, different areas, they're similar. I've seen people down to the western who have colors that are similar to people around here, but every person, there's over 50 people, 50 different buoy colors around here, 50 or 60, something like that, in the area that I fish. A lot of people fish pairs, which is two traps with one main buoy and a float. Your main buoy, you're looking at about, oh, uh, that's $2. You've got to have a breakaway swivel for a whale release. This breaks away at 600 pounds of pressure, which you don't really need because we never kill any whales. But And they have to be branded with your name and number on them. So you gotta have a brander that's about two hundred and fifty dollars. Spindles about two dollars. Usually the buoys around ten dollars, depending on what size you get. So you gotta have at least four hundred of these main buoys. So some people have eight hundred actually do the breakaway and everything, have both buoys rigged up. I've only got about 650 traps, so I've got roughly 400 buoys. And that's a monotonous task to paint all of those every year. But we got to do it. It's March 15th today. Everybody's getting all horned up, launching their boats. So we're down in the basement. We had 60 degrees the other day. We ended up getting a snowstorm last night to nip us in the ass. And Remind us that winter isn't over yet. We figured we'd get jump start, get ready to start setting some traps and show you guys the ins and outs of all the bullshit. It ain't all gravy. You don't just go out there and haul a trap. There's a lot that goes into getting you to that point, getting that trap out there. A lot of people pick their colors lots of different ways. I went by my grandfather was orange and white, my father's orange and green, and I'm orange and purple. So, my mother's favorite color and wanted to keep the orange going as a family tradition. We got the orange and purple. My buoy. My father's buoy, the orange and green. My grandfather's buoy, the orange and white. A lot of people like to prep their buoys, scrape the paint off, stuff like that. I don't really like to put much time into it because it doesn't matter. You gotta come back and repaint the buoy every year anyway, so I try not to put much time in the prep work. It already takes long enough. You feel like your wrist is gonna fall off by the end of it. I like wearing latex gloves with this oil-based paint, just makes for easier cleanup. My purple's latex, but uh buoy paint we're using is $100 a gallon blaze orange oil based paint so I always do two colors uh, one color one day one color the after everything dries so we'll step you through the process here and maybe you'll realize that just how much just goes in just to have an eye buoy out there. Buoy's older than I am I always like to do a split in the bottom so I can see them with them facing the opposite direction. That purple's a little dark, so I like to split the bottom. There you have it. 
like I said, I gotta come back over and do the purple. We'll show you that. And show you how. Doesn't look like much now, but once that cleans up, it'll be awful nice. You got the first coat on anyway. 107 buoys. There, guys, I'm just going to show I'm showing you some of the different types of bu buoys and floats. You see, this one's an old school spindle. It just has a plastic stopper on it. That's how a lot of my buoys are. It's a hand me down buoys from my grandfather. But you got this one that don't have a breakaway on it. This is the newer type of spindle. It's just a PVC conduit. Has a swivel on there. And it's just held on with a stainless steel screw. Then you got stuff like this. It's just a pl plastic driven inside of there. Driven up through. Tied to the knot. This is a float. Somebody's float that I got off a trap that I bought. It's a different type of spindle. Here's a little bad boy I'd like to show off that my grandfather probably went a little bit overboard with. It's a big ass buoy. But he took and covered it with fiberglass. Literally fiberglass the buoy into the swivel. Which isn't going to help because you'll never be able to take and replace the swivel. But you're never going to break that buoy. She's a... Uh, he didn't do that to too many, he just did it to try to keep the paint on there a little better. We got stuff rigged up like this, just a small float, PVC conduit. I use these for single traps. Then I end up using them for floats too. So you got your small brown toggle float. Some people might make these double floats. This, a float, when I say a float, is actually holding your trap up and then you have your main buoy out behind that. That's the one you actually gaffed. But people rig them up like this. Got a couple buoys here that got hit by a wheel of a boat and made it out the other side. Still usable for something I guess. You can turn that one into a float. Here's our buoy branding rig. It's just a butane, or well, propane I guess. Propane torch. You heat it up. This is a uh, aluminum. I had somebody build this for me. But just heats it up. Brand the buoy. Here's a bronze one. My father's There's a latex paint, uh, pretty purple. A lot easier on the fumes and I wish I could get a bright enough orange I'd use latex for my orange but that brightness really makes a difference on them foggy days finish up a split I like cake this stuff right on because it just like forming a shell on it. There you have it. Let that baby dry out. Just like a brand new one. See the breakaways on these ones are a little different. That's a legal breakaway. There we got the purple all done. Well, there you have it, guys. Just like that. Got 100 buoys painted, 107. Only got another 300 to go. So, got enough buoys to get started, start setting some traps. I usually don't set my full gang in the springtime anyway, but getting to end you off with a little bit of buoy history. As you may or may not know, they used to make them out of wood. And I've got an original wooden buoy here, my grandfather's back when he 
started with the orange on the back. I don't know if that's original paint or not, but she's carved out of a piece of lumber or something. Wooden spindle. Painted right in and looks like he nailed some rubber or something down here at the end, but that right there, I don't know how much it weighs. Probably ten pounds. I wouldn't want to have eight hundred of these babies. But that's what they used to use, a piece of wood, cut it right out. And I would imagine we got it a lot easier than they used to. Another thing, we got some floats here. I don't know if these are antiques or what, but it's just a pair of floats. And they used to use glass. You see it's just a glass ball wrapped in some twine here. That used to be a float. And this is what we're using now for floats. I think we've come a little way there. Plastic makes it possible. But anyway guys, so there you have it. Some of the bullshit that we have to frig with. Some people put more time into it than others. Some people have bigger buoys. Usually I end up going through two gallons of paint. At least of the blaze orange, so... I usually have about three hundred dollars wrapped up in paint and probably oh at least forty eight hours probably into painting at least if not more so usually I get a stern man who helps me so some people pay to have their buoys painted they're the highliners I can't afford to pay someone hopefully you learned something gonna end you off with a little montage of buoys different buoy colors hopefully you learned something let me know what you think of my new segment my behind the scenes lobster and segment here I'm gonna show you gear work other little things that we have to do running for bait maybe dipping up our wives so stay tuned we'll see you next time Sat on daddy's knee, pulled out the child and said to me, Where Grampy fished and his father for him. And as quick as I could listen, I'd hear him saying, Yeah, the apple didn't fall far from the tree.